parenthood in the wild looks different from one species to the next, drastically different. That's because animals have many different modes of survival that impact how they care or don't care for their young. It can be ultra adorable or downright unpleasant. Some animal parents coddle while others take a sink or swim approach, literally abandoning their offspring shortly after birth. The team hold the baby in front of Min Min, expecting her to come forward. Of course, that's how things go in the wild, but hear these critters out, they're only doing what comes natural. 15 Worst Animal Parents in the World Number 15. Alligator Researchers analyzed data from years of alligator tagging and tracking programs at Orange Lake, a shallow, marshy body of water near Gainesville, Florida. In a span of six years, 267 stomachs from adult alligators that have been killed by hunters were examined for tags in an effort to find how many tagged alligators were being cannibalized by other gators. 33 of the stomachs contained tags, for a total of 56 tags in all. One particularly hungry gator had eaten at least 14 other alligators. The other gators carried a tag or two in their stomachs. The records associated with the tags revealed that 91% of the cannibalism victims were under 3 years old, which is juvenile by alligator standards. So this means that baby alligators can't depend on their elders for a helping hand. In fact, young gators are a perfect bite to eat for large gator adults. That rate could vary in other lakes and swamps because the prevalence of cannibalism depends on the abundance of other food options. Still, up to 7% of young alligators fall victim to the cruel fate of cannibalism. The sad reality is that a little gator on gator cannibalism may help keep their populations stable. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly! Number 14. Harp Seal They call the North Atlantic and Arctic Ocean home. With their sleek bodies built for swimming, the harp seal relish their time in the water but will give birth on land. But before each adorable baby harp seal makes its debut into the world, its father battles it out with other harp seals to see who can mate with the female. The battles between males to gain the right to mate with a female can get quite nasty. But sure enough, harp seals mate each year and give birth to their snowy white bundles of joy. When it's time to give birth, female harp seals will make their way to the ice. With thousands of other seals on the ice, female harp seals are able to spot their very own pup based on their distinctive scent. But it's just not that easy for these newborn seal pups. They're vulnerable to pneumonia while developing the thick layer of insulation that they need to brave the freezing temperatures. Unfortunately, female seals are only producing milk for 12 days, the shortest known nursing period in mammals, and one that sees them lose a third of their body weight as they help pups put on the necessary fat. Then she must return to her feeding grounds. She'll never see her pup again. Seal pups spend the next four weeks alone on the packed ice, hoping to survive before they're ready to go hunting in the water on their own. Number 13. Cuckoo In the UK, the common cuckoo is famous for heralding the start of spring. They time their arrival to coincide with the hatching of hairy caterpillars which are their preferred foods. About a month later, and when they have recovered the energy expended during the long migratory flight, cuckoos are ready to start laying their eggs. But that's when the extent of their parroting skills end. Cuckoos are famous for being the only British bird not to rear their own young. Instead, it lays its eggs in the nest of another species, allowing the host to take care of incubation and feeding and rearing duties. Although cuckoos are a special, although cuckoos as a species lay eggs in many different colors and patterns, female cuckoos have evolved to favor one particular host species over others, laying eggs in just one color or pattern. As female cuckoos evolve to lay eggs that better mimic those of the host species, there's an ongoing arms race between the cuckoo and the host bird. Once a female cuckoo has chosen a nest, she'll spend some time watching it from a nearby vantage point to ensure that she times the egg switch just right. If she's too late, then she'll sometimes eat the entire clutch of eggs to force the parent host to produce a replacement brood. Number 12. Sicilians 
Sicilians are amphibious, worm-like, burrowing creatures that can grow up to four feet in length. They live mostly in tropical soils, but a few aquatic and semi-aquatic species can be found in freshwater systems around the world. Almost all species of Sicilians spend their lives in underground burrows, which means their natural behavior can be very difficult to study. So seeing one give birth is extremely rare. Researchers discovered specialized baby teeth in hatchlings of the Sicilian. These babies were using their strange teeth to feed on skin secretions from their mom, they suggested, but due to the difficulty of studying them, they couldn't prove it. It wasn't until 2006 that this behavior was first recorded. Feeding behavior is quite frenetic with the young frequently tearing pieces of skin by spinning along their long axis and sometimes struggling over the same piece. When the mother has been peeled, the young continue to search for and eat fragments of skin. This didn't seem to bother the mother though. It appeared that she had grown a special type of skin that could be easily and harmlessly shed from her body. It may seem gross, but so highly effective. They really make great moms if you think about it. Number 11. Hooded Grebe If you ask any parent if they have a favorite child, it's understandably tough for them to choose. Not so for the hooded grebe. This South American bird lays two eggs, which she and her mate then incubate on floating nests. However, as soon as egg number one hatches, all three swim away from the rest, leaving egg number two to hatch all by itself. The mother grebe builds a nest made from rotten vegetation where both parents sit on two eggs. Once the first egg hatches, it's bye-bye birdie. She favors the firstborn and abandons the other. She cares for her chick on a first-come, first-serve basis. The parents, take the, first, the parents take the firstborn and swim away in pursuit of happiness, abandoning the nest and leaving the other chick at the mercy of the elements, predatory birds, wicked carnivorous fish, and all other bad guys of the wild. Let's think about the positive though. What is the mother grebe trying to accomplish? Well, she produces an insurance offspring, meaning at least one of the babies will survive if there is a problem with the first offspring. While this may seem cruel, the hooded grebe is just trying to maximize her chances of breeding successfully by laying more eggs than she can actually look after. Number 10. Pandas People love pandas. What's not to love? They're adorable, in the same way your favorite stuffed animal is. But life is complicated for these cute creatures, especially when it comes to parenting. Female pandas are only fertile for two to three days each year, and then only in the spring. Their relative infertility is only compounded by the male's resistance to mate, especially in captivity. At birth, newborns are only about the size of a stick of butter, approximately four inches long and four ounces heavy. Their small size and developmental immaturity combine for a panda infant mortality rate during the first year of 40%. In fact, newborn pandas often die within days of being born. We know it's hard to think about anything negative regarding these adorably cuddly critters, but the reality is that they're pretty negligent parents. In fact, despite the fact that pandas often have twins, they almost never care for more than one cub. The mom will choose the weaker of the two babies and start ignoring him or her in favor of the stronger sibling. To be fair, it's not entirely her fault. Bamboo is notoriously low in nutrients, so it's near impossible for a mother to make enough milk to feed two cubs. Even so, it's a harsh decision for a mother to make. At least the cubs abandoned in zoos are still cared for by the zookeepers. Number 9. Seahorse Seahorses are very unusual because it's the males that get pregnant and give birth to the babies. Instead of growing the baby seahorses inside their belly in a uterus, as human mothers do, the seahorse dads will carry the babies in a pouch, a bit like a kangaroo's pouch. But to produce babies, seahorses have to mate first. Seahorse mating is really beautiful. Males and females dance around one another and flutter their fins, and they may dance together over several days before they actually mate. When they're decided, when they've decided they like each other, the seahorse females swim toward the surface of the water with the male close behind. She then puts her bright orange eggs into the pouch of the males through the hole at the top of their pouch. Once the eggs are safely inside, the eggs are fertilized and then start developing into baby seahorses. With that, the job of the seahorse mom is done. She swims off and leaves the father to take care of the growing babies. When male seahorses, when male seahorses give birth, it's very dramatic. The male will open the hole in his brood pouch and violently jerk around to squeeze all of the babies out. 
Some species of seahorse can give birth to more than 1,000 babies at once. After he's given birth, the seahorse dad does nothing more for his babies. Number 8. Koalas When we see baby koalas, it's always an adorable little joey riding on their mother's back or cuddling in her arms. What you probably didn't know is that koala babies eat their mother's poop. While it may be incredibly disgusting sounding, it turns out that this gross habit is as essential part of a koala's baby development as anything else. This facet of their diet is actually an important part of their gut health. In humans, we acquire gut bacteria essential for processing certain foods immediately after birth. Koalas need gut bacteria for processing their diet as well, but require a little extra help. This substance, known as PAP, is loaded with nutrients that the baby needs in order to grow. A koala's main food source is eucalyptus leaves, as well as the leaves of other related trees. It turns out that eucalyptus leaves are fibrose and hard to digest, so the pap acts like a transitionary food that koala joeys begin eating around six to seven months of age between nursing and eating an adult koala diet. Because pap comes directly from a mother koala's digestive system, it's full of her gut bacteria. Without eating pap, baby koalas would never be able to gain the gut bacteria needed to digest eucalyptus leaves. Number 7. Quokka Australia is one of the few continents in the world where all three groups of mammals, monotremes, marsupials, and placentals, can be found. So it's home to a lot of unusual animals, like the quokka. If you're ever lucky enough to meet one, chances are you'll break out in a grin. The quokka, also known as the short-tailed scrub wallaby, is about the size of a domestic cat. They're nocturnal marsupials. They're some of the smallest members of the macropod family, which also includes kangaroos and wallabies. And though it may be known for its sweetness, they have a salty side. Surely the most photogenic animal in the southern hemisphere can't be heartless enough to sacrifice its children. Well, unfortunately, it's true. If attacked, the mother will abandon her baby to get away. It's the ultimate survival strategy that's only really available to marsupials, according to researchers. The mother is interested in her own survival and her future reproduction. But before you judge quokas too harshly, you should know they're not alone in this action. Macropods in general, that's their strategy to get away from predators. They'll all sacrifice the young and the mother gets to live to see another day. Number 6. Tasmanian Devils Nature can be so brutal. For Tasmanian Devils, perhaps even more so, especially for their babies. Their breeding season lasts from March to May. Female devil. Female devils will mate with dominant males who fight to gain their attention. Three weeks after conception, the females are ready to give birth. That's when things get really complicated. One minute, all 50 brothers and sister devils are cruising towards life and heading down the old birth canal. There will be food from mom for everyone when they get out. All the siblings will have their own way of feeding, relaxing, and enjoying each other's company. Or will they? These 50 extremely tiny joeys scramble to attach themselves to one of the four available teats in the mother's pouch. Mama Devil can only feed four at a time. Those that don't make it will not survive. In fact, the new mother eats the remainder of the offspring. See what we mean about nature being brutal? The remaining joeys will stay in the pouch for roughly three months while they become fully developed. After the joeys leave their mother's pouch, they remain hidden in the den for another three months and eventually, the young devils begin venturing out on their own before finally leaving the den. Number 5. Sand Goby Sand gobies, small fish native to the European coast, are among about 20% of fish families worldwide that display some form of care for eggs and hatchlings. Male sand gobies work harder at building nests and taking care of eggs when females are present. The first time such courtship parental care has been documented in any species. It's the male sand gobies that focus their energy on caring for the eggs, and during a long summer, they may have the opportunity to raise several broods. Unfortunately, they'll consume their own eggs if they believe that the cost of trying to raise the brood outweighs the benefits, a new study has shown. While experiments showed that all male gobies nibbled on the eggs in their charge, unaccompanied males not only shirked their parental duties, they also were more likely to gobble down entire clutches of eggs. When threatened, the sand goby may decide that the pros of recouping some of their investment in the eggs through cannibalism and subsequently trying again with a new batch 
may outweigh the cons of having lost those eggs. It was found that smaller whales were more likely to consume their entire batch of eggs than larger males, suggesting that these males would have a greater need for the nutrients. Number 4. Dracula Ants Dracula ants are smaller than a sesame seed and are named after the gruesome feeding habits. A feisty bug found only in Madagascar, they were only discovered in 1994 and have a body shaped more like a wasp than an ant. The Dracula ant boasts spring-loaded jaws that it uses to batter its foes at speeds 5,000 times faster than the blink of an eye. Unlike other spring-loaded ant jaws, the Dracula ant powers up its mandibles by pressing the tips together under extreme forces. To fire the weapon, one mandible slides over the other, releasing the pressure like a snap of the fingers. The crushing weapon, a pair of Tim-like organs called mandibles that extend from the mouth, can hit speeds of up to 295 feet per second, or 200 miles per hour, a new study shows. They are so fast they can propel smaller insects into the air and give larger intruders a sting they won't soon forget. To fire the weapon, one mandible slides over the other, releasing the pressure like a snap of the fingers. Oh and yeah, the tiny ant drinks the blood of its own young to survive. The bugs feed on the blood of their own larvae, making small incisions and carefully drinking just enough to avoid killing their victim, a process dubbed non-destructive cannibalism. Number 3. Cuckoo Catfish Cuckoo Catfish is a small catfish from Lake Tanganyika, one of the lakes in the Great Rift Valley system in Africa. The cuckoo catfish actually got its nickname because, like the cuckoo bird, it's a brood parasite, meaning they trick the parents of other fish species into taking care of their eggs and young for them. The cuckoo catfish usually parasitizes African freshwater fish called cichlids. Some cichlids have quite elaborate parental care compared to the other fish. As soon as they lay their eggs, the female cichlids scoop them up into their mouths and incubate them until they hatch. The catfish can then smell the spawning cichlids and zooms into the cichlid nest, gobbling up a mouthful of their eggs while simultaneously laying its own eggs. The catfish eggs have evolved to look just like the cichlid eggs. The mother cichlid can't tell which are hers and which are the catfishes, so she's forced to scoop them all up. And that's not even the end of it. The catfish eggs have also evolved to hatch earlier than the cichlid eggs. The newly hatched catfish quickly eat up all cichlid eggs. It's bad for the host cichlids, it's a great deal for the baby catfish, and they get protection and also an easy meal upon hatching. Number 2. Burying Beetle These fascinating little creatures are the recyclers and undertakers of the insect world. Even if we disregard the beetle's rather ghoulish alternative name, the grave robber beetle, this insect still exhibits some morbid behavior, especially when it comes to breeding and raising its young. Firstly, the burying beetle detects the smell of a small dead animal, perhaps a little bird or a mouse, and heads toward it. The male and female will mate and move on to the next step. After working so hard to claim the corpse, the beetles work together and start to bury it. The female beetle lays her eggs on or near the buried carcass so that when they hatch a few days later, she then relies on their parents to provide them with food. The adults partially digest the flesh first and then regurgitate the liquid carrion for their offspring. By the time the young have reached their third growth stage, they're able to feed directly from the carcass. They tunnel into the corpse, gradually hollowing it out as they feed on the decomposing flesh. After feeding voraciously for several days, the larvae wriggle out of the remains and burrow into the surrounding soil. There they pupate, ready to emerge next season as adult beetles. Number 1. Black Eagles The black eagle is a bird of prey. Like all eagles, they soar over forests in the hilly regions of tropical and subtropical South and Southeast Asia, as well as Southeastern China. They hunt mammals and birds, particularly at their nests. So let's talk about their offspring. If you have brothers and sisters, then you know just how irritating sibling squabbles are. So imagine being a parent to fighting kids. Most parents know when to say enough is enough and break it up, but when it comes to black eagles, mom often just watches the fight, even when the older, stronger chick ends up killing the younger sibling. Black eagles are really cruel birds, especially when it comes to females. They're not directly cruel to their babies, but their actions might be considered as abandoning babies. Namely, black eagle females will often just watch a fight between their babies, even if it ends in death. 
By letting it happen, Black Eagle moms ensure there's ample food for the fitter offspring. Known as siblicide, it's so common that it's unusual for both of their two chicks to survive. Nature is basically cruel and there's no justice in it. Therefore, some bird parents are forced to abandon their babies even if it means a sibling fight to the death. Parenting is tough, we get it, and even humans have to make some sacrifices to make it work, but not like these animals, anything but that. These videos just prove that nature can balance out beauty with equal amounts of brutal.